Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? So you may see some little messages from a couple of my army buddies pop up in the little Discord window. It pops up in the top. So ignore that. They're having a conversation. I'm, I haven't figured out how to stop it from doing that. Especially when I'm doing a video. So this morning, we're going to be reading out of Mark 9.19. Bring him unto me. That's obviously not the whole verse. I forgot to set it up beforehand. Yeah, here it is. So the whole verse is... There they go. The whole verse says, He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him unto, or bring him to me. And this is, we've covered this one here in the past. Because they were, I mean, it's almost like they were testing his patience a little bit. But he was, it sounds like he was getting a little exacerbated at him because it's like, okay, really guys? Really? How, how faith is, I can even imagine how it would be now if he came. <laughs> It'd be way worse than that, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go up here. Jesus heals a boy with an unclean spirit. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed, and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, What are you discussing with him? Then one of the crowd answered said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, very important statement he makes here, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible. There's so much more behind that particular verse than we could cover in this video. But he's making a statement to him, but it's also to make him aware of his lack of faith. If you can believe, all things are possible to you who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. True statement and a correct statement. Because we still have unbelief in us, even though we believe sanctification grows us through that. I mean, I, the thoughts still pop into my head sometimes. What if, what if, what if? But you know, they get less and less and less every day. Because I'm growing in that stuff. Becoming settled in my belief. But he makes a very true statement here in verse 24. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he rose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privily, Why could we not cast, this, cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Now, you know, Jesus was always in prayer and always fasting. And, plus he was Jesus, that's why he was able to do it. <laughs> so, let's see what the devotion has to say on this part of the verse, bring him unto me. <sighs> Excuse me. Despairingly, the poor, disappointed father turned away from the disciples to their master. His son was in the worst possible condition, and all means had failed. But the miserable child was soon delivered from the evil one when the parent, in faith, obeyed the Lord Jesus' word. Bring him unto me. Children are a precious gift from God. This is a pray. This is a, a statement that many people today need to hear. Because to them, the child is to be thrown away. Like we've been doing so many millions of times. Children are a precious gift from God, but much anxiety comes with them. That's true. That's very true. 
They may be a great joy or a great bitterness to their parents. They may be filled with the spirit of God or possessed with the spirit of evil. In all cases, this is a man who's had kids. In all cases, the word of God gives us one receipt for the curing of all their ills. Bring him unto me. Oh, for more agonizing prayer on their behalf while they are yet babes. Sin is there. Let our prayers begin to attack it. Our cries for our offspring should precede those cries which betoken their actual advent into the world of sin. Pray for them before they get old enough to start down that road like we all did. In the days of their youth, we shall see sad tokens of that dumb and deaf spirit, which will neither pray aright nor hear the voice of God in the soul. But Jesus still commands, bring them unto me. When they are grown up, they may wallow in sin and foam with enmity against God. Then, when our hearts are breaking, we should remember the great physician's words, bring them unto me. Never must we cease to pray until they cease to breathe. No case is hopeless while Jesus lives, and Jesus lives forever. The Lord sometimes suffers his people to be driven into a corner that they may experimentally know how necessary he is to them. Ungodly children, when they show us our own powerlessness against the depravity of their hearts, drive us to flee to the strong for strength. And this is a great blessing to us. Whatever our morning's need may be, let it be a strong current bear us to the ocean of divine love. Jesus can soon remove our sorrow. He delights to comfort us. Let us hasten to him while he waits to meet us. And if you've had children, you know exactly what this man is talking about. I regret that I never raised my kids up in a godly way because I wasn't completely in a godly way. In a way, they believe. But they're not where I feel like they should be, both of my children. So... I lift them up in prayer that the Lord would reach them, help them, open them up to the truth. I don't know what the future holds. And, and, and I'm actually quite fearful for both of them in of the future. I'm I actually, there's several people in my family that I'm fearful for, for the future. As to how bad things could get and how they would deal with it. But I can't make them do that. I also can't make them believe they have to make that decision. And I've had this talk with my wife. Because she was, in a way, the sense I got was she was an understanding that as long as I believed, everything else was fine. But I explained to her multiple times that you, you have to come to the Lord yourself. It's a personal interaction, a personal relationship. And, I, and her understanding has grown quite a bit. But I still worry for my children. I still worry for others in my household. I still worry for other people that I know. That they believe. There's there's a, a form of belief there. But have they crossed the threshold? And while I still don't understand exactly how the Lord is going to bring people around, because I see the, the changes he's making in me, and I'm hoping that some of those changes might start happening in the others. And it may be, I just can't see it. But I still lift them up in prayer. Because I'm not the one that judges. I'm not the arbiter of this stuff the Lord is. I have my own salvation to work out with fear and trembling. And all I can do is share with them what I know, share with them what I'm seeing, share with them the truth. It's up to them to make the decision to go to him or to answer his call. And so, like you guys who have kids, you're, you're troubled. I'm troubled by what I see, by what I experience. My brother got married, got a girl pregnant, then got married, had the baby, and then ended up divorcing the girl. And my brother treats his son like garbage. So I was I, I babysat him for a long time. I could see the demonic influence already working on him, because my brother has made several times stated how he wakes up at night and sees a dark, shadowy figure crouched down by the wall 
or next to his bed. He has demons that surround him all the time. And he won't get rid of them. He won't run them off. And his theology is way off in his understanding. He's deep into Mormonism and other stuff. And so it would be no surprise that the little boy would end up in a very similar situation. He's very attached to me. I haven't seen him in a while, but he's very attached to me. And he acted one way when he was around me and my wife, but as soon as mom came in, he was a demon. He turned into a demon. That child is going to wreak havoc on them. But I still lift him up in prayer to the Lord. Because I don't know what the future is going to hold. Things may change. But you know, there are some kids that are just bad. They're born that way. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of influence or just because of the kind of kid they are. But like this guy said, you know, sometimes it brings a lot of stress. It does. Kids are stressful. Kids are hard to deal with. You always wonder whether you're doing the right thing or not. So in that case, we bring them to the Lord. And if we can't do it physically, we do it prayerfully. We do it spiritually. Lay them in the Lord's hands. Lord, can you deal with this? Because I can't. I, I don't know what to do. I'm struggling to know what the right thing is to do. Sometimes my answer is to go up there and snatch them by the collar and smack them a couple of times so they'll wake up and pay attention. But I know that's not. That's just going to drive them further away. So what should I do? What's the right thing to do? Even as adult children. So we take them into... With prayer, we take them to the Lord and pray on their behalf. Make intercession. As a parent, you make intercession for your children and even for those around you. And while you're praying, lifting them up and putting them in the Lord's hands, pray for yourself too, that he would give you the right words, show you what to do, help you to teach them. Now, again, keep in mind, some people need to be brought to the end of themselves. in order to change and it may take a while so you may have a child that comes up or, or a child may be in your life that comes up that is a, a demon demon possessed but that may be because god is going to show his mercy and grace later and bring that child to a point where he will gladly receive the offer of free salvation and will flee the demonic influences in the world when you try to pull a person gradually, some people respond, some people don't. Some people need to see the darkest end of everything in order to run to the light because they don't know how bad it can be until they see it. So don't be afraid to lift your kids, your family, your friends up in prayer and make intercession for them. We're going to do that this morning for all of our loved ones. Because I'm sitting here and I'm thinking back, it's hard and it's terrifying sometimes. And it makes you angry and it makes you sad because you don't know what to do or what to say. And you feel like you're watching the train wreck and you don't know how to stop it. And so we always have the recourse of bringing them unto the Lord. So let's do that this morning with our family and friends, with ourselves. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and this devotion that helps us and, again, opens more subjects of discussion. It even reminds us of some of the things we should be doing. Children are truly a gift and a blessing. And you shower us with them. And what do we do? We, we sometimes, some people cast them away. Some people drive them away. 
Some people do even worse. Sometimes even before they're born. But they are a wonderful gift. I'm glad I only had two, but I think sometimes it would have been better if I had more, but maybe not because we struggled a lot. So having more would have just made it more of a struggle, which would have brought more opportunity to do the wrong thing. So Father, I'm thankful for the two that I have. And I lift them up, and as everyone else is praying, lift your family up. I lift my children up to you for salvation. I don't know what the future holds for them. And I know there's a sense of understanding there to a degree, or, or maybe even a sense of belief. I mean, the very fact that you deny would show you have to believe it's even a thing in the first place in order to deny it. And I see that in one of my children. The other one just hasn't, his, his brain's not right, he just hasn't come around. But I still lift them up because I love them both, and I lift them up to you for salvation. That you would save them out of this world so that they would be in heaven. I lift all of them, everyone in my household up for this. I lift everyone that I know up for this because there are so many who are right there at the door but will not walk through it. There are some that are far away from the door that have wandered away and they will not come back. And, and I say this, and, and I struggle with saying this, but I don't know what to do or what to say. Even though I have the word in my hand, I still don't know what the right words are. I rely on the Holy Spirit for that. But we know we can come to you, Lord, in prayer and show you, here's here's what I, the here's the possessed one that I'm trying to deal with, and I, I can't cast the demon out. So, Lord, I'm going to bring all of them up to you for salvation, for renewal for rebirth so that they may enter heaven too now, i know that may not be the case for all but i'm sure hope it is lord i lift myself up at the same time that you would keep me strong in the faith keep me strong in the word knowledgeable so that when the time comes i can share the truth with someone else I can give them your word that maybe they'll be armed with some seeds of faith that will grow at the right time. Be watered and grow and become real faith. That you would give and grant all these others repentance so that they may turn to you for salvation. So that they may see the path that they're walking and know this isn't the right way. I, I need to go to God because there's the only, that's the only place I can find hope. Because other than that, there is no hope in this world. And I'm going to make a lot of mistakes and I already have made a lot of mistakes. But I pray that my mistakes don't hold anyone back except me. I'm willing to take that hit, no problem. But I don't want my mistakes to hold mistakes to hold anyone else back. So, Father, I lay it all at your feet. I lay it all at your, put it in your capable hands, Lord, because I'm not strong enough. And I don't know enough, and I'm not smart enough or wise enough, and neither do I understand enough to be able to do it the right way. But you are perfect, and you can do it the right way. You saved me, so if you can do that, you can certainly do any of these other things. You created everything, so yeah, absolutely, you are perfect in this and so many other things. So I put them in your hands with trust, and I will believe that your will will be done no matter what. And I pray that your will is done concerning these things no matter what. And I will rejoice in knowing that you are going to deal with it. Because that's what you said you would do. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that you have given us this avenue, this resource to come to. Lord, I don't know what to do here. Can you give me the right words or can you fix this or deal with this or help this? Because I can't. I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong. Because we always stumble. So, Lord, we bring it to you. Because you know the perfect way, every time. You know what a heart needs in order for it to turn. We don't, we can't, we don't have that perspective, we can't see. 
And while you're at it, help our unbelief too. We believe, but help our unbelief too. Make us stronger in the faith. Make us more bold in the faith. For your glory, always. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your great love. For your free gift of salvation that you give to all who would take it. In Jesus Christ's name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. I feel the same way most of you do about children. And it's not even just my children, it's other people's children. My children are adults now, but it's other people's children. I worry about them. I struggle with what to do and what to say. And I, I ask that the Lord would give me more words, the Holy Spirit would give me more words that I could speak to them that would be a benefit to them, that would help them. But I always mess that stuff up. I've always done that all my life. Because I speak way too plain and way too bluntly, I guess. And sometimes it feels like the sound of my voice irritates people. But I have to rely on the Lord because I am imperfect in all these things. He is perfect in everything. And I, my hope is that he will deal with it according to his will. And there is nothing else that I can accept or expect. Because that's what his word says he would do. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.